And you want to find each of the unknowns here. Now the answers for these exercises are in the back of the book. They don't have them immediately in this section. So if you wanted to work more problems for reinforcement on your own, know that um, those answers are in the back of the book as well. I have the answers up here if you want to peek to see how you did. So for number one, you should be getting an x equal to 12. Number three, y equals to 100. And number 16, x is equal to 58.9. It's okay. No, it's okay. Okay, let's set it up. I'll, wa I'll walk it through step by step. Let's look at, so the second one, number three. Yeah. Okay, so you'll notice that we have y over 60 is equal to 5 over 3, okay? So we're going to do the cross multiplying. We always start with the top. I'm going to start with the y, and then we're going to multiply it by the bottom on the other side. So y times 3 is going to be 3y is going to be equal to then the bottom of the left-hand one times the top. Okay, so we cross multiply. So this is going to be 60 times 5 is 300. Okay, now once we have our equation set up with only one unknown, we want to get y by itself. So since 3 is multiplied, we're going to divide the left hand side by 3 and the right hand side by 3. So the, y, the 3's cancel out on the y side here. Okay. And then we take 3 into 300, we'll go 100 times. So y is equal to 100. Okay? All right. How did the last one go for you? Uh, I haven't started. You haven't gotten there. Well, let's do it real quick. Let's set it up. 
Make sure we can get that as well. I'll just erase this and then we'll just do it again. Oh, did you really? Oh, let's check. Because the loss, centimeters is 6.2 centimeters is. Oh, you did a conversion in there. You don't need to because this is going to be centimeters underneath. This, if we if we calculate for the bottom, I know what you did. You were thinking, oh, I need to convert first before I do this. You don't need to because you're setting up your ratio on this side. These centimeters that will end up being centimeters here. They'll cancel, and then inches essentially cancel. That's why, in essence, or any ratio, there's no units. Okay, they, they all end up canceling out because these are fractions of the same units on either side. So we don't have to worry about any conversions here, actually. So if we know, and really what we're saying is we know that 6.2 centimeters over something is going to be equal to the same proportion as 1.2 over 11.4. So we want to know, well, how many centimeters is that on the bottom there? You know, what is the larger number? So we're going to do the same process the way we set it up. We're going to take 6.2 centimeters times, in this case, 11.4 inches. But again, I'm not worried about those units. I'm just going to set it up. So 6.2, if I take 6.2 times 11.4, I end up with 70.68. Is that right? equal to 1.2 times x, right? So solving for x here, I'm going to divide by 1.2 on both sides. So divided by 1.2, I get 58.9. And I know if centimeters are on the top here, centimeters will be on the bottom here. It is equal to x. OK. So same process. You set it up, you do the cross multiply, and then if needed, you solve for the unknown. Okay. Now in part C, we have a couple of word problems that we can do. Okay. So the two that I picked out for reinforcing this idea of proportions are, on page 193, number 7 and number 9. And we'll go through these together. So number 7 first says, we have a cyl cylindrical oil tank 8 feet deep, holds 480 gallons when filled to capacity. How many gallons remain in the tank when the depth is 5 and a half feet? Okay, so essentially what we have here, I'm just going to draw a picture of it and maybe you can visualize it already, is we have a tank of oil, okay? And it says here that the tank is eight feet deep, okay? And when it's filled to capacity, when it's completely full, okay, we have 420 gallons in there, right? All right. Now, what they want to know is, okay, let's say we use some of that oil, okay, in the same tank, all right, but the level has gone down a little bit. The level is not completely full anymore. The level is now down to, kind of try to draw this. The level is now in there at 5.5 feet, all right, and we want to know, Hmm, how many gallons are in there now? All right. So we've gone down two and a half feet, right? All right, so now how much is left? Well, it's a proportion, right? We should be able to figure this out. So now, it really doesn't matter how you set it up. It, it, honestly, it, it, it actually becomes, as long as the way you set it up on one side, you set it up on the other side. So we can do either eight, to 420, to take care of my left-hand condition here, is equal to, now, if 8 was my feet, that means on this side I have to put my 5 and a half on top there. Do you see that? I line them up across the top. So 5.5 on this side. Do you see how those two are the common factors, or they're the same values except just different numbers? 
And then on the bottom here, if I had my 420, which I knew what my gallons were there, I'm going to put a variable because I don't know what that is, right? That's going to be my, what do I want to, what, what do I want to call it? What letter? Call it G. We'll call it G, right? For gallons, that would be a good one, right? Okay, how many gallons? That's what we're solving for. So here we have a proportion that is, you know, set up for us. So we're going to take 8 times G, so 8G, <coughs> cross multiply 420 times 5.5, 420 times 5.5, .5, and I'm going to get 2310, all right? Solving for G here to get it by itself, <coughs> going to divide by 8, okay, on that side, and divide by 8 on the, on the right-hand side. So divide 2310 uh, by 8, and we should get G equal to 288.75 gallons. I'm sure I got that. Okay, that's, that's one way we could set it up. We can set it up another way, right? We can flip these, but we have to make sure that we line up those values again. Let's do it one more time and make sure we get the same numbers here. Let's say I said, oh, when I looked at this, I put the 420 on top, okay? But I'm gonna put the eight underneath then. Do you see that? So now when I set up the other side, my unknown gallons has to be the G on top and then because this is eight feet here, my depth, I need to put my depth on the bottom on the other one, okay? So if we go through this process again, we're gonna see that we get 8G is equal to 420 times 5.5, uh, 2310. And notice that now at this point it's the same, right? It's the same problem. So divide by eight, divide by eight, G's cancel, my G comes out to 288.75 gallons, okay? So whichever way I set it up, as long as I'm consistent and line the things up across the equal signs, I'm good. I, the same process holds and I'll get the same number. All right? So questions about proportions or ratios? So that means I think it's time to take a break. What do you think? Yes. yes. All right. So let's take a break. Let's take a 15 minute break. So come back just a couple minutes after nine o'clock. Okay. And then we'll, we'll get going on the other things. <laughs>